Hey, it's George here again. If you're watching this video, this is going to be the last video for the ventilation dynamics in this particular series. And with this video, what I want to do is kind of tie all these concepts together in a big flow sheet or a big mind map for you. So kind of, you have a kind of an idea of how all this stuff works together. All right. And I have pity for you for having to watch these things. If you had to watch these things for a course or whatever it is that you're, you're learning about, but if it's your interest takes, I hope you found it informative. Anyways, enough of me talking. Let's go to the flow sheet. Now the flow sheet or the mind map kind of looks something like this. And we're going to start off with what we started off right at the beginning, our respiratory rate, minute ventilation and tidal volume relationship. And it's going to go something like this. If you remember, minute ventilation, respiratory rate, and tidal volume. From the respiratory rate, what we can get from that is total cycle time. With total cycle time, it splits up into TI as well as TE. And TI and TE can come together to give you the I to E ratio. But there's one last relationship here that we need to look at and remember it exists within this conglomerate of ventilation dynamics. And that is the relationship of tidal volume, TI, and flow rate. Right? So here in, it, in essence, just with the basic ventilation dynamics, is the relationship all coming together. And we're going to use a bunch of arrows here to see what happens. If you have a tidal volume that remains the same while the respiratory rate increases, what has to happen to the minute ventilation? Well, if the respiratory rate goes up and the tidal volume remains constant, you're still going to have an increase in the tidal volume delivery. Now, if the respiratory rate goes up, what has to happen to the total cycle time? Total cycle time, in this particular case, has to go down. They have that inverse relationship. So if there's more breaths in one minute, then the total cycle time for each breath is going to be reduced. So if, within that total cycle time, the TI remains consistent, because it's preset on a ventilator, or it's just the patient's just maintaining the same inspiratory time, What's that, what has to happen to expiratory time? So again, if you have a TCT that goes from this amount to this amount, it gets smaller, but yet the I time remains constant, what has to happen to TE? Well, TE is going to decrease in size. So if you have a decreasing TE while the TI remains constant, that means they're becoming similar, or getting closer to being the same value in size. So that is an example of an increasing I to E ratio. Now let's look at this last little grouping right over here. And in essence, it's our tidal volume, I time, and flow rate relationship. If the tidal volume remain constant, remains constant, and your I time remain con remains constant, what happens to flow rate? Well, there's no changes in tidal volume, no changes in your inspiratory time. Your flow rate then has to remain constant as well. And that's the, the working of our ventilation dynamics flow, flow sheet here, or the ventilation dynamics into relationship with each other on a flow sheet like that. So if you have any questions or comments about this, please let me know. If you liked it, give me a like or a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. But again, constructive criticism of how I can make it better. And please, if you get a chance, subscribe to this channel. This is George, Ventilation Dynamics, the last in this series out. Have a great day.